Alrighty, welcome to the Celtics Up podcast brought to you by Price Picks, the exclusive fantasy basketball partner of the CNS Media Network. And by Game Time Tickets, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I'm your host, Cameron Tuftabai. I'm joined by Dr. Justin Quinn and Alex Goldberg. Uh, he's back from off tour. And in today's program, as you probably know from the show title or the thumbnail or whatever, we're going to try our first ever Celtics Lab wins pool. I'm going to be honest, this is something they do on the Hoop Collective, one of my favorite basketball podcasts. I know other people do it too. Basically, we are going to have a little draft. We'll each get 10 teams in the NBA. And at the end of the season, whichever person has the group of 10 teams with the most wins in the regular season wins our little pool. We haven't yet decided on a um, prize, but regardless of the lab portion of the programming, we're going to be doing all of that. Before that, we'll do the news. But before that, if you guys are, um, yeah, if you have a suggestion for what we should be wagering on, uh, I don't know, shoot us a, a Twitter message or something. Um, if you are down for the cause of listening to us do our wins pool, you must be a fan of the podcast. So you must be a fan of us, which means I'm just going to take some time to get updates from my friends, Justin and Alex, because Justin went on a business trip to Cancun that is literally a Mad Lib come to life, and Alex is on tour. So Justin, how is Cancun? How is your Mad Lib? Well, you know, speaking right now from Mexico City, where we are currently still being rained on by the hurricane that is barreling towards my family in Florida, uh, it was a similar scene at the end of the trip with Helene, passing right by Cancun for the last day that I was there. But before that, I got to see Katie Ledecky speak. I uh, got to talk to her a little bit. Didn't really get enough to put into the interview uh, or the interviews that I created a story about why, you may have wondered this as well, Raising Canes has been so interesting. Athletes, uh, Al Horford, Drew Holiday, just a few from the Boston area. And this is something they've been doing across the country. So I took a look into that. Across the continent, apparently. That. Yeah, yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah, so Justin and I write for Celtics Wire, which is a part of a suite of sites. So the story he did about his business trip to Cancun with Katie Ledecky and Snoop Dogg lives on Rookie Wire. Have you searched Justin Quinn Rookie Wire? I'm sure you'll find it. Alex, who plays bass in a band called Divine Sweater, who does our intro music. I think you know that at this point, dear listener. Alex, uh, you were like on tour throughout the Midwest and I got a show coming up in Boston, right? Yes, that is correct. So we just wrapped up our uh, run both in the Midwest and then also a little bit up the East Coast, including North Carolina and DC. Very fun, a lot of good crowds, a lot of good energy. But uh, the headline story is Boston. For those of you who are Celtics Lab listeners who reside in these city of Boston, uh, in which the Celtics are based, we're going to be opening for the California Honey Drops at House of Blues on Wednesday. So if you want to come this Wednesday? to that, this coming Wednesday. Uh, oh, I thought it was next Wednesday. That, I'm glad I clarified. If you want to come um, to that, um, get tickets on our website and then uh, come through and come through for the early part because that's when we're going to be on. And then, this uh, is, yeah. This is going to be the show where Alex finally gets the crowd to record a buffer where the crowd says already welcome to the Celtics Up podcast, right, Alex? Correct. Yes. But uh, you, have to, <laughs> you have to get there. Um, and w because we're the opener, we have a really tight timeline. So we have, we have to get there and we have to get there quickly and we have to fill in quickly. So dear listener, uh, please feel free to come through. We'd love to have you. I would love to talk Celtics with you uh, as well as many other things. And if you're in the greater Massachusetts area, we'll also be playing a festival in Hingham, Massachusetts on Sunday. So uh, you got two shots in the Massachusetts area. Feel free to come through. Love to talk. Would love to meet you and uh, would love to uh, play some songs for you. Uh, just for the YouTube crowd, they know this, but Justin just dropped from the call. So we, we have all the time in the world. Um, what's been the best song to play off the new album? Either like mm. it's just the most fun or like the crowd seems to connect with it? Probably the eponymous a time for everything the title track for our album uh which you can find on spotify apple music Bandcamp, soundcloud etc it's named a time for everything and the song for which the album is named is extremely good and very fun to play live so i would go with that personally what song has the best bass solo none none of this album really has bass solo there are prominent bass lines throughout but yeah. i wouldn't necessarily call them solos we're trying to really tighten the sound as much as possible that sounds like you're getting the squeeze uh all right um i guess we gotta do the news though justin i wonder where yeah, it went let's do it hopefully we 
<laughs> this is still usable. Um, all right, well, the news, well, oh, here it comes. He's back. Uh, probably the biggest basketball news of consequence has happened today, in fact. Uh, Shams Charania, formerly of The Athletic, is now the, the not the heir apparent, but the heir to the Adrian Wojnarowski throne. He took basically Woj's old job. I think ESPN would agree with that framework. Um, I don't think we're that surprised. Do either of you have a, a take on that? I mean, it, it's hugely consequential because that's a big news broker. Um, actually, I do have a take, but I'm curious if anyone else here does. Yeah. My the only thing I have... Oh, sorry, go ahead. You, no, you go first. The only take that I have is that I never really bought any of those people from other sports reporting were going to jump in and take over those relationships. That seemed a bit of a far-fetched proposition. Uh, this is the most uh, expected outcome of that very small off-season drama. Yeah, my only take on this is that I'm bummed that uh, laying off Zach Lowe was almost certainly a part of this uh, in order to secure the necessary bag that it probably took to um, get Shams to come over to ESPN. Obviously, Shams is very good at his job. You know, he's built a pretty serious rep as the the primary competitor to Woj and now the successor to Woj, and you don't get that uh, by doing nothing. That being said, it's another reflection on what is increasingly a kind of scoop and Twitter scoop driven news economy, as opposed to doing interesting and good basketball analysis, which I think is a bummer because uh, I, I really, really like Zach Lowe and his podcast. Um, even if I was disagreeing with some of his assessments more and more in recent years, um, you know, quality journalist, good at his job. And I guess I'm just a little bummed that uh, increasingly it just seems to be that ESPN is gearing everything towards TV and Twitter uh, as opposed to long form hoops analysis. Yeah, but, I mean, that's a good read. I, I've only met Shams here or there. He seems like a nice enough guy, but he's not, he's transactional. He, he produces headlines and the news. Um, and so it, it does kind of feel like that's where ESPN is trending towards. I guess one of the things that I, it occurred to me is I think we've talked about this before. The Celtics are airtight. Um, they really like move quietly through the world. If ever things got out, it was usually through Woj. Um, so I'm curious how that dynamic plays, plays out. I know that like Jalen Brown has a relationship with the athletic. Maybe he grew to have a relationship with Shams, but I'm curious. Like there was that, um, the series two years ago when the Celtics were beating the Sixers and, right before the game, like a story about doc came out by way of Woj and everyone knew that doc asked Woj to write that story. The Celtics don't seem to have a relationship like that with Shams. And so, so it was just like interesting that some people use Shams as their like mouthpiece in the court of public opinions. And now he has moved teams from the athletic to ESPN. I don't think it affects the Celtics. They felt the Celtics are so super uh -huh. tight lipped, but we'll see. Um, cool. uh, some more news. I think Justin is having bad Wi-Fi, not me, right, Alex? Uh, a little, <laughs> ske little sketchy from both of you, if I'm being honest, but it's fine. We'll just keep it real good. Blame it on Hurricane. Yeah. I don't know how that's affecting anything, but sure, why not? Uh, well, let's get, let's, get through the, yeah, let's get through the news while we still have Wi-Fi. Uh, Tony Snell got traded from Maine to the Heat G League team. He's still looking for an NBA deal. He's got to be in his mid-30s at this point, but we wish him all the best, of course. Um, My, sorry, just really quickly on that. Phoenix Suns, come on. You have no excuse to not sign Tony Snell. He's a vet. He can, at the very least, hit a corner three still. Um, you guys desperately need any sort of available minimum talent. Why not? Yeah, but so does Miami. Players? Yeah, good, good point. Yeah, I actually wouldn't be surprised if he ends up seeing a little floor time with them, just so kick with tires on him. We'll see. So um, the Celtics have been doing some press stuff since we last talked. I'll just kind of run through it. I don't think we have to talk about it. Uh, Derek White and Drew Holiday got a slam cover. That means that in the past, what is it, two and a half years, Jalen Brown played chess on slam. Jason Tatum got a slam cover. We're, we're going to get the whole damn starting lineup soon enough. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Hey, sign up today. Get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Cook up hot takes with your friends and win real money this football season. 
when you and your crew run your game on prize picks. This week on the Prize Picks Football Board, Justin Jefferson for more than 83 and a half receiving yards, and Patrick Mahomes for less than 267.5 passing yards. Download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks, run your game. Jalen Brown went on the cover of Time Magazine. Technically the first Celtics since Larry Bird. As best I could tell, Larry Bird shared his cover with Wayne yeah. Gretzky. That was the yes, most recent one. That's correct. So Jalen's the first solo Celtic in a long time, but it was part of the next 100 Time Magazine looking at the next 100 leaders. But Jalen Brown got a um, profile out of that, and it's a really, really good one. I, I recommend people read that. Jalen Brown also went on Hot Ones out of nowhere. Jalen Brown is playing footsie with traditional media. Um, also sharing Celtics Lab on Instagram. A bunch. Thank so you. At this point, point Jalen, just come on the show, man. Yeah, um, seriously. Yeah, I, we don't really need to talk about it. I am curious. <laughs> Jalen will both continue to push like I'm at Nike is in the wrong and I'm in the right and I'm willing to talk about it. And he's slowly playing the role as like traditional athlete and like doing traditional press hits a little more, which is fascinating. Um, I think just to briefly touch on that, you know, in hot ones, I think one of the things that jumped out to me is that he, he really appreciated the interview style of hot yeah, ones. He really liked Sean Evans. <laughs> yeah. He really liked Sean and he, he was pretty openly, um, you know, he, he, he praised him pretty openly. And it makes me think that to some degree, now that Jalen has won a title, has won finals MVP is pretty clearly stamped as like an elite high level basketball player. I wonder if his comfort level with uh, kind of more traditional media outlets has grown to some degree now that um, he, he is to some degree stamped at, you know, obviously media will try and spin narratives about all of the Celtics, Jalen Brown included, because that's part of their job. But um, will, will, will stamped, locked in, guaranteed Hall of Famer Jalen Brown um, now be a little bit more comfortable with media. It, it seems like that might be the case. Yeah, he said something like, it, part of why he was so effusive with praise for Sean Evans was that Sean Evans didn't ask the kind of questions that Jalen is used to. But part of it is he doesn't step outside his comfort zone that often. He, he does a lot of his work through like the press conferences, which is pretty cut and dry, I'll be honest. Um, so maybe it's a two-way street, and the more that he goes on, friendlier like jason tatum goes on jimmy fallon and like talks about his kids book so he gets the softball questions jalen brown usually doesn't do those kind of press hits so he doesn't get asked yeah. the fun questions it's all the regurgitated crap that we have to ask 82 times a year anyways uh, jalen brown just really quickly if you're listening and uh interested in coming on we are prepared to run full jalen brown propaganda over here at celtics lab it's going to be softballs it's going to be questions that you'll know the answers to we will do whatever it takes. I am more than willing to sacrifice my journalistic integrity. <laughs> uh, or, I mean, I've talked to him about being a teacher. I mean, I'm sure he'd be interested in that. He's just, he's busier than we are, if we're being, <laughs> yeah, if we're being honest. Uh, speaking of busy, the Celtics were busy kicking the Nuggets' ass in Abu Dhabi. How's that for a segue? Um, yeah, the Celtics played twice against Denver and Abu Dhabi as part of uh, their first two preseason games. They've got three more before the season opens on October 22nd. This is the fourth time the Celtics have played abroad or the fifth time they've played abroad, something like that. So it's not brand new. I think we've talked about the Abu Dhabi of it all. It's interesting. It does not portend a sale to a billionaire from that part of the world, but I'm sure there were, there were a lot of handshakes and palms pressed and whatnot. Justin, from a basketball perspective, what was your most interesting takeaway from there are two preseason games we saw here. I think, honestly, it's kind of two on both ends of the minutes distribution, if you will. Sure. The first of which is, I guess Lonnie Walker is probably headed to the main Celtics. Uh, he did not yeah. do particularly well with the time that he had. Uh, he looked a little confused about what he was doing, what he was supposed to be doing. Some of that is probably due to the fact that, you know, he hasn't played with his team before. And... You know, maybe he's not a good fit. I guess we're going to find out. But then the other big thing is I'm a lot more confident about Luke Cornett starting center. Uh, 
And, you know, I've seen enough from Xavier Tillman and Mimi Ishketa that I think both of them will be more than adequate as, as backup big men playing four to six minutes, maybe a little bit more for Tillman, like 10, 12, probably. Uh, but generally speaking, I think the, the, the big takeaway is, is that the lower end of the spectrum of playing time is probably not going to be falling to any new names unless it's maybe Jason Springer or maybe Jordan Walsh. And the big men are pretty good. I'm going to touch on both of those points really quickly. I am actually not sure that Lonnie Walker is even necessarily going to be on the main Celtics. My thinking being that Lonnie Walker um, has been in the league for a decent amount of time now and has gotten actual run as both a starter and a uh, utility player. Um, I would not be surprised if rather than doing a G League stint, Lonnie Walker simply asked to be released outright so that he can go sign with another team, which I would be pretty shocked if the Celtics didn't grant him that considering that he's on a 10-day. I know. think if it's another team, though, it will probably be abroad with an NBA uh, out in his contract because there's just a lot of players like him right now. They're just There's no room for them. That's fair, although injuries do happen, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's somebody's injury fill-in. Um, and then on the other point, I totally agree with regard to Luke Cornett. I didn't get a chance to watch either of the games while they were happening, but I watched highlights. To me, you know, one thing that really jumps out is Cornett looked very confident rolling to the rim. Uh, he looked very confident in his role and what he was doing. And it makes me think that in particular, three-man units with Peyton Pritchard, Luke Cornett, and Sam Hauser are going to be a pretty significant part of Boston's regular season. Um, you know, those guys have some now pretty established high-level championship chemistry. And it seems like all of them have made some improvements to their game in ways that complement each other pretty effectively. I noticed that Sam Hauser has a little bit more dribble drive game going on where he's, you know, kind of beating guys off the bounce, get taking pull-up twos, things like that. Peyton Pritchard was outstanding in both of these yeah. games. I mean, he, he looked completely at home, confident, knew exactly where he wanted to get continues to bomb away from deep, which Joe Missoula, if he's tipped his hand even slightly, it's clear that the Celtics are going to get potentially very silly from three this year. Um, 61 freeze, threes in that uh, first preseason game is, is, is a little nuts, but we'll see. Uh, you know, but those three guys now with Cornette, Hauser, Pritchard, they've now been on the team for three years. Uh, they've built chemistry up with each other off of the bench in that whole time. They have championship experience as well as multiple deep playoff runs. To me, those three guys really make up what I think is going to be the bulwark of this year's bench unit. And I, I would not be surprised at all if you start to see some pretty strong numbers coming out of those trio, that trio when they're on the floor together. Yeah, last year you saw that trio play with Jason and then either Drew or Al a lot. And I really like those groups because, um, first of all, Jason could sometimes play at the four if it was the Drew lineup. Um, but it was also a chance for him to play playmaker and if he needed to, just like take over offensively. It'll be interesting because, Alex, to your point, it feels like that trio has leveled up a little bit. I mean, having Jason out there is better than not. But it'll be I'll be curious to see if that, that three is out there, if they still need Jason as that, like, obvious stabilizing factor or if he's just like an additive piece um it's the preseason yeah the, the the statistical ability for data from preseason to code for the regular season is pretty limited but if you're concerned about the older players or the players who have a lot of miles underneath their belt having to step in and play a big role it's it, so far it feels good that um to see the bench play like this the the theory that i tried on for size the past few weeks is that like maybe they would trade Pritchard for Walker uh, to step in and be a cheaper facsimile of like a guard off the bench. That's just not going to happen. Uh, Walker didn't look like he's up for the task and Pritchard is too good. I, I, I last year I ate crow on Pritchard and I guess I'm going to eat it again because Pritchard is too damn good to, I mean like maybe two first round picks at this point. Like he is a uh, bona fide, spark plug um he knows what he's doing out there even if he still has you know defensive liabilities all righty so the celtics have a back to back this coming weekend they have an eight o'clock how's this they have a saturday night eight o'clock home game against the 76ers and then the next night 
a seven o'clock home game, a Sunday night, but it is a holiday weekend against the Raptors. And then two or three days later, they're in Toronto for their third and final preseason game. So uh, by the time we talk again, we'll see at least two preseason games. I'm th- I think I'll be at both of them. Um, and we will take the same approach, which is to say well, it's fun to watch basketball. I don't know if we learned anything. I think for that first Philly game, just Jaden Springer, 42 minutes. Let's get it. Like, sure. why not? <laughs> I love that. I love that for Springer. I told him happy birthday at practice the other day, and he seemed genuinely very surprised. So <laughs> happy birthday, Jaden Springer. Uh, belated happy birthday. Check out our friends over at Game Time. Football is back, and there's nothing better than being there live. But let's be honest, finding the right tickets can be a hassle. That's where Game Time comes in, and I want to tell you about an awesome new feature called Game Time Picks that makes it super easy to find the best deals on tickets. I recently used Game Time to find tickets uh, to go to the Red Sox, and I was blown away by the selection. There were tons of great seats available. I was able to find a deal that was way better than anything else I found on any of the other ticketing apps. I especially love the Super Deal section that made it easy. And another thing I really like about Game Time is that they show you the total price up front, so there's no hidden fees, and you can see your view ahead of time before you buy the tickets. It's like having a virtual tour of the stadium, which is always helpful, especially if you're not on the taller side like some of us. Anyways, Game Time Picks is a game changer. It takes the guesswork out of buying tickets, whether it's football, basketball, or a concert. It helps you save money. Plus, Game Time offers lowest price guaranteed and event cancellation protection. So you can buy with confidence knowing that your purchase is covered. So are you ready to experience the thrill of live sports and events? Download the Game Time app today and use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. That's CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. All righty. We're going to transition to the lab portion of the programming. That's when we take a deeper dive. That's when we dust off something new. That's when we play a game. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a wins pool draft. So again, we'll go through the entire league. We'll each end up with 10 teams. And those are going to be our 10 little teams. And whatever total regular season wins those 10 teams produce uh, will be our scores. And whoever group of 10 teams has the biggest score at the end of the season is the big, big winner. Uh, please help us come up with cash and prizes. Um, otherwise it'll just be bragging rights, I suppose, but this is a, well, you'll have to check back in in April uh, to see who won the prize pool. Again, this, they do this on the hoop collective. If you're familiar with that, but I think other people do this, like as like fantasy sports and whatnot. Um, we decided we would rent, we're going to do a snake draft and we're going to do a random number generator to decide the order. If you watch How About Them Celtics, which you should because it's an excellent podcast, Jack uses StreamYard, which we're using, and he knows how to put things on screen and like, and I don't know how to do any of that clever crap. So I'm going to age myself as a millennial, not Gen Z, and I'm just going to hold up my phone that has a random number generator on it. Dibs on number two. Justin, do you want to be number one or three? I'll be number one. And Alex? That's perfect. I wanted to be three the whole time. I knew it. Um, I'm going it, it, to, it's set to one, so I haven't hit it yet. It's going to be first to three. So that you just got to like really get in the random sauce. So uh, for, if you're listening, sorry, but if you're watching, it's also not very good either. So we'll do it quick. Ready? That's a three. Let's That's go. a one. That's another one. That's another three. That's a two. <sighs> That's a one. So, Justin, you can choose what you want. That's a two. Another one for good measure. And a three. So, Justin, it's going to be a snake draft. Do you want first pick? You could have second pick or third and fourth pick. And then we'll snake from there. I'll take first pick. Okay, Alex, do you get second? Uh, do you get to choose at this point? I don't know. I mean, we're making it up. If I can yeah, do you want place... You, I mean, but it was I'd a big, rather, big win for you as number three. So I'll let you choose. Uh, I, I would rather have the, uh, the the back-to-back give me three and four. Okay. So occasionally, listener, you're going to hear me typing as I bookkeep. Uh, so that means, Justin, you are going to get the first pick in our 2024-2025 NBA regular season wins pool. So can you please, Justin, tell us what team you think – you'd like to add to your pool. What team do we cover on this podcast? I'm going to take the Celtics. I think there's a, there's a, there's a good argument 
that they might take their foot off the gas a little bit psychologically, but everything that we are hearing, well, you know, you hear the, the sirens. sirens. <laughs> this apologies. is so important. No, it's okay. It's uh, Brooklyn. We understand. Always, always fun in Brooklyn here. <laughs> no, but seriously, everything we've been hearing from camp, everything we've been hearing from the players, everything we've heard from Joe is they're treating this season as its own discrete entity, which to my mind means a very similar approach, which means they're probably going to be number one in the league in terms of wins. They may not be 64 wins, maybe 60, 59, something like that. But I'm, I'm taking them first for that reason. They're, they're going to have the most wins. It's a good pick. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a unanimous. That was the right pick. Let's clip this for um, our friends at CLNS to put on social media. Let's go around the horn. Justin, how many wins will the Celtics win next year? 62. Alex, how many wins will the Celtics win next year? 59, but they'll still have the number one record. Cameron, how many wins will the Celtics win next year? Uh, 60. A nice even 60. I don't I, I don't know if they can use that on social. We were we weren't, we weren't <laughs> funny enough. Okay. Anyways, uh Cameron has the second pick. Crap, Ola. Um the it feels obvious to pick OKC because they're going to be really damn good. They're going to be young. They have no reason to not go all out. They're really deep. But the West, the West is so hard, and the tax for playing in the West has got to be worth a few games. Whereas the East, there's so many crappy teams that like just by default, you're going to back your ass into a bunch of wins. Um, here, So with respect to the Oklahoma City Thunder, I'm going to take... The New York Knickerbockers Ooh. with the number two pick okay. and our wins pool. I think they're going to be a good team. I don't think they're as good as the Celtics at all, but they play in the Eastern Conference, and the Eastern Conference uh, is hot garbage uh, this year, at least part of it. So I think the Knicks, by virtue of that, are going to rack up some wins. So, Cat, uh, welcome to the Big Apple, buddy. Alex, you get picks three and four of our draft. So well, you get the I'm, last pick in the first round and the first pick in the second round. Take it away. I, I'm pretty thrilled with uh, your choice because I am certainly taking the Oklahoma City Thunder at three. Sure. Um, I us. just think that they are going into this season as clearly the most talented team in the Western Conference. The additions of Hartenstein and of um, Alex Caruso are hand-in-glove fits. Mark Dagnall is an excellent coach. I think Jack Holmgren is going to be a monster this year. Um, yeah. and I think that SGA might actually win MVP outright. So, uh, for me, it's a no brainer pick. I understand that the West is hard, but this roster is absolutely stacked to the gills. I think they're the one seed in the West and I think they're going to win a whole lot of regular season games. My second pick. Wait, do we think, um, do we think they'll uh, win more wins than the Celtics? Win more wins. Who? What kind of I am inclined. I am inclined to give the Celtics the east the east advantage there. Um, I think that the Celtics are just better than their competition in the Eastern Conference for the most part. I do think that OKC is going to have the second best record in the league, and uh, I think they're going to be a bear to play every night. Their their Justin, roster depth depth is astonishing. Justin, will the Thunder have more wins than the Celtics, or no? The Thunder will have less wins than the Celtics, but like by like two or three. Uh, and considering that it's the Western Conference, that's pretty impressive. Uh, I do think that the Knicks have a path to get to the second most as well. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Thunder for the second most as well. All right. Okay, Alex, you have the first pick of the second round. Take it away. So there's a bunch of different ways that we could go here. Obviously, you know, in the Eastern Conference, there's a couple of heavy hitters. Philadelphia is going to be very good, I think, if Embiid uh, stays healthy. The problem is that he will probably miss 20 games. Um, I really like the Orlando Magic this year. I like, uh, I think I like the Bucks potentially more than uh, the current commentary it does. But I am still sticking in the Western Conference for my second pick. And I'm going to take somebody that uh, a team that might surprise some people, given kind of what the offseason trend has been about. I'm going with the Denver Nuggets at four. And Whoa. my rationale is pretty simple. Jokic churns out 50 wins basically every year. It's a safe pick, but that guy just does nothing more than win basketball games. Uh, I think that there are other teams in the Western Conference that, in my opinion, got worse this offseason, uh, looking at you, Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, 
And I think that uh, that will potentially soften the blow of Denver losing some depth pieces. I actually do not hate Russell Westbrook as a bench guard for this team. I think that their bench last year was severely lacking for any sort of playmaking or any sort of rim pressure whatsoever. I think to some degree, Westbrook will alleviate that. Obviously, he's going to have his bad shots. He's going to have his bad decisions. He's not a good defender anymore. I do think he has a role on this team. And again, the thing that I just come back to is that if you have Jokic and any healthy players around him, you're going to win 50 games pretty much like clockwork. It's a safe pick, but I think it's the right pick. Well, yeah, I think Westbrook's one of my favorite players. I would never want him to play in the playoffs for a team I root for. But as a regular season dog, I mean, he just tries harder than everyone else. Uh, I'm going to also maybe think outside the box. I'm going to go back to the East because I, I stand by just you're going to beat up on Detroit and Brooklyn in April so easy. Um, I'm low on some of the teams that might go further in the postseason. I'm going to give a tip of my hat to a team that played harder and faster than most other teams most of the year, and I'm going to take the Pacers with my second pick. So that means Boston's off the board, New York's off the board, OKC's off the board, Denver's off the board, Indy's off the board with the sixth pick, and then you get the seventh pick, Justin. Who are you taking in your wins pool? What is your sixth pick, your second pick on your team? Uh, I'm going to pick two teams that I am not super confident are going to do particularly well in the postseason because of health, just because I've never really seen either of these players truly manage their health the way they say, at least one of them, Embiid, uh, this season that he's going to. I'm going to pick the 76ers and the Milwaukee Bucks, both in the East, because, again, weaker conference. Uh, I don't think – these are not the teams I would pick, again, to go past the second round very likely in the East, you know, Boston being one of the barriers to that, obviously. But I do think that both of them are going to, as they tend to do, rank up close to or about 50 wins, maybe even a little bit more in Philly's case in the regular season. I just don't have too much faith in them in the postseason, which is not the point of this exercise. All righty. So Justin ends the second round by taking Philly and opens the third round with taking Milwaukee or vice versa. It doesn't really matter. Um, we have an interesting trend. That's already five teams from the East taken and only two from the West. I'm up uh, with my pick in the third round. Now, now I'm dripping with sirens in the background. Um, it's honestly, it's fitting because I'm going to pick a team that it seems like it's a real party when they play. And there's a lot of noise and craziness. I'm going to bet high on the Memphis Grizzlies rebounding Ooh. and rebounding in a big way. I'm going to take Memphis. Love, it. love um, that pick. That could go. In, I, honestly, I don't love that pick because it's such an obvious. Well, it couldn't be as bad as last year, but that doesn't mean they're going to be as good as the year before. Um, I'm riding really high on a lot of nostalgia and hope and broken forward trajectory, but the. Like Indiana, they're just going to play harder and faster than most teams most nights, and especially in the spring when teams start to tank like mad, they're just going to punch people in the jaw. So no pun intended, as it were. Uh, Alex, so you got the third pick of the third round and the first pick of the fourth round. Take it away. Well, speaking of teams that are going to be playing harder and faster than most teams on most nights, my next pick is going to be a team that I'm extremely high on heading into the season. It's the Orlando Magic, yeah, who I cool think pick. are are going to be a nightmare to play on so many of these awful regular season Wednesday back-to-back -back type games. They're so fast. They're young. They have so much defense, guys. I think a lot of these games are going to be ugly. I think yeah. you're going to be looking at a lot of 89 to 85 type games, but the Magic win those games. And I think they're going to win potentially a very surprising and high amount. Now, obviously, you know, if Franz Wagner's shot falls off a cliff again, that's not going to help. Uh, I still have questions about their offensive playmaking, but that team's going to suck to play every night. And so I'm taking the Magic uh, for All my right, next okay. pick. You get to open the fourth round. I won't recap every round, but just so people know where we're in. Boston's off the board, then New York, OKC, Philly, Indiana, Denver, Milwaukee, Memphis, Orlando. So this is the 10th pick and the first pick in the fourth round. It's Alex's Mr. Goldberg. Yeah. Go. 
You know, well, so thinking about teams that are going to be trying pretty hard, teams that are, you know, really trying to, you know, go after a high level of winning, uh, and teams that really need the regular season to go well for them in order to achieve those goals. Uh, to me, the next pick is pretty clearly the Dallas Mavericks. Um, to me, it feels like Dallas, if anything, I think I, I would hope learn their lesson that being a five seed and trying to tear your way through the playoffs is really, really, really hard. I'm, I'm, I would imagine that they are going to be going for higher seeding this year. They're going to have a more settled roster. They have PJ Washington, uh, you know, now with a full training camp. The Clay Thompson fit, I have some questions about, but I think there's going to be a lot of nights where this team puts up 130, 135 points, uh, and there's just a barrage of shooting and playmaking from Luca and Kyrie and Clay. Um, I think Dallas is pretty serious about trying to get back to the finals, and uh, I, I think they're the right pick here. So I have the next pick, and I have a problem. The Cleveland Cavaliers oh. are still on the board, and that's the last good team in the East because then you're looking at Miami, Atlanta, Charlotte, Chicago, um, which one of those teams will bubble up, but I don't feel great about that. So part of me wants to just take Cleveland. That's a good, solid playoff team that intends to win games. But we still haven't taken Minnesota, which I think people will remember is was pretty good last year. They did make this massive trade, but they have Ant Edwards. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head who won more games last year. Um, so I actually really don't know where to take this. Um, Pretty sure it was Minnesota. They were second in the West, I think. Yeah, I, if, that sounds probably right. The, the yeah. question you have to ask, Ken, is whether the Cavs are going to be there uh, after you make this pick. If they're not. I already know who I'm picking next round. It's it's sick. Uh I'm going to take the Timberwolves. Um, I'm betting on Ant Edwards. I'm betting on uh, this is like Memphis. This could go so south if like the ownership thing goes sideways and Ant, you know, is out six weeks. This could be a bad pick in a hurry. But the sunny side of the street for Minnesota still looks pretty good. So I'll take Minnesota. Justin, that means you have uh, the last pick in the fourth round and the first pick of the fifth round. So you get to go back to back here. Ooh, buddy. Well, I think I am going to take the team you did not take. I probably would have taken that out of the two anyway, just because I'm a little less confident that two players who really need the ball in Ant and uh, Julius Randle are going to mesh as well as they should early on. I wouldn't be surprised if they figure it out, particularly if it clicks in Randle's head that he's got to learn to play with a team that he's on if he really wants to be successful in this league, like on the level I think he wants to be. Well, I'm not saying he's not a good player, but to be a championship yeah, 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 player, gotcha. he's got to bend his game a bit. So for that, I think I'm going to take the Cavs just because, as you said, they're probably the last good team in the East. I still can't count out the Heat. Uh, we'll see what happens over the course of the season. Zombie Heat, you know, Heat culture, blah, 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 blah. But I think for me, it's going to be Cleveland for sure. As far as the next round, I'm going to go out on the limb and try the Sacramento Kings in the West. Cool. Say more. They seem like a good team. They have, you know, some questions around how well they're going to they're mesh uh, this upcoming season. But for me, they're always a good team in the last couple of seasons. Maybe not a great team. Maybe the West is a little too hard for them to really you know, expect to be a playoff team this season. But I do think that they're probably the, the last good, good team, unless you believe in the Warriors, which I have lots of questions about. Um, I'm so excited about my next pick because I feel really good about it. Um, this this team has a coach who is an offensive genius. He stinks in the postseason like Russell Westbrook. I wouldn't want him to coach my team in the postseason, but I'd be happy to have him in the regular season. Kevin Durant and Devin Booker spent yeah. the summer around winners and reminding themselves that they're pretty damn good at basketball. And even without Bradley Beal, who let's just pencil him in for an injury, uh, those are two of the best players in the world. We were reminded of that this summer. And this is another one that could go so sideways so quickly. But if you are feeling good about the Phoenix Suns, they're, they're still a pretty damn good team. Um, I also really like some of their depth. It's not, again, I'm not saying this team is going to win multiple playoff rounds, but I think they're going to be more competitive on a given night and have every reason to win as many games as possible. So give me the Phoenix Suns for my pick in round five. 
Clear, Alex. Clearly the best team remaining. It's a good pick. Um, hmm, now we start to get a little messy. So let me, while okay. you think, let me um, talk to people. So Golden State's still on the board. Miami's still on the board. The Both LA teams are still on the board. And then the usual suspects of uh, who wants that is, is still on the board. All right. So I'm going back to the East on the premise that there's a lot of bad teams in the East and that the middle class of the East will stop up some easy wins against your Detroit's, Brooklyn's, et cetera. Um, this, is a, this is an upside pick. Uh, it's betting on the vibes being a little different from last year. It's betting on um, you know another year of a coach being able to kind of implement their system. And it's betting on their temperamental superstar um, having a little bit more uh, of a success this year with the ball now placed firmly in his hands and no one else's. I can't believe I'm saying it. Give me the Atlanta Hawks. Um, Sweet. Why not? Okay. Thinking, we're not picking, so, we're not picking postseason winners. We're picking regular season no, winners. We're not. And I think, <laughs> listen, guys, Trey Young, a lot of flaws to his game, a lot of challenges for him as a postseason player. Guy still puts the ball in the basket over and over and over again. He's going to suck to play in the regular season. I think the Hawks roster makes a little bit more sense. It's not as talented without DeJounte Murray, but I think it might make a little more a sense in, way terms better, of, yeah. in terms of the hierarchy. Um, Quinn Snyder, I feel like, is a guy who has consistently shown that he can get a, a good season out of uh, rosters that are maybe not as well built as they would like. It's a big upside play. It could blow up massively in my face. Trey Young could be getting dealt in February. But for now, I will take the Atlanta Hawks and see where that gets me. And so now we're in a very interesting place where we have some young teams that are on the rise but might be a little early. We have some old teams that are trending down but might still have a little bit of fight left in them. Uh, and we have some really bad teams below all of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. I think I'm going to bet on infrastructure. So w I, the Hawks are my risky pick. Uh, for this pick, I'm going to bet on infrastructure. I'm going to bet on stability. I'm going to bet on, uh, you know, um, just being a, an absolute bear to play on a night-to-night -night basis. Uh, my most hated team, the team that lights uh, nothing but fire under me and fills me with rage, the Devil Magic Miami Heat are going to just churn out more wins because that's what they do. Ben Adebayo still hasn't won his defensive player of the year. I think he's going to be trying very hard. Tyler Hero needs a little bit of a redemption season after last year. Jimmy Butler, who knows what's happening there. But I do know when Jimmy Butler is playing, he's very good. And Spolstra is as well. I will take Hawks Heat. Both East play-in guys uh, for my next two picks. Fantastic. All righty. Um, yeah, I have the East. The bottom of the East is sitting there. I have some thoughts. No one's taken Golden State yet. That feels spicy, but also maybe obvious. Like maybe there's a reason none of us want that. New Orleans feels like like they're not even playing Brandon Ingram. It's a, he's getting a coach's DNP in the preseason here, like that. That feels like a bad situation. The Lakers aren't good. I'm going to take the Toronto Raptors. I think oh, that, man. <laughs> I think that that's a team with <laughs> talent. Great yeah, I think that's a team with talent under the radar. Going to be better than the bad teams in the East, so a lot of free wins there. Um, last year, it's like just sometimes you have years where like the chemistry doesn't work and you're a little snake bitten and it's just like a forgotten season. And I think they had that last year and the year before that was kind of a transition. And um, I just think that Toronto has a lot of talent and in the regular season that matters perhaps more than high level talent or ambition. So I'm taking the Raptors with my pick in the sixth round, Dr. Quinn, you get the last pick of the sixth round and then to open the seventh round, let's go a little faster. Agreed. Uh, in the interest of that idea, uh, I think it really comes down to the Warriors and trusting uh, and trying to squeeze these two timelines back together again, uh, which as we have all learned as Celtics fans, two timelines, don't do it. <laughs> Not a good idea. You can't give either one the attention it needs. That said, uh, the Pelicans, I think, are probably the only other team 
conceivably likely to make the postseason without going through the play-in tournament. I don't think they're going to, but they could. So I'm going to pick the, pick the Pelicans. All right. And for posterity, that's your pick to end the sixth round. What is your pick to open the seventh round? Well, uh, considering I had it down to those two, I'll take the Warriors. Sure. Uh, those are good picks. It seems yes. unlikely that both of those are bad picks. Um, I really don't like the Houston Rockets emotionally, but intellectually I'm a little curious. God, I for the Clippers' sake, I hope they're good. I want to take Chicago. Isn't that stupid? That's so stupid, right? You, you can good. take Chicago, buddy. If you want to take Chicago, <laughs> um, I'm going to take the Lakers. I don't. I'm going on. I told Justin earlier today. I'm going off feel. I feel like they really need to win some games. So I'll I'll take the Lakers there. Alex, you get pick uh, your pick in the seventh round and your pick in the eighth round. All right, it's dart throw time, folks. Uh, we're getting silly. We're going for upside. We're trying crazy stuff. Give me the give me the alien. Give me the San Antonio Spurs. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Um, damn it. Damn. Yeah, Victor Wembanyama, maybe a top fifteen player already. Um, the defensive player of the year hype train is leaving the station. Chris Paul's probably only going to play about fifty games, uh, if that. Um, but you know. I'm, I'm just betting on the alien taking a massive jump into his next year and the Spurs being in that play in zone. Um, hmm. Yeah. The bottom of the East is, I, that's so it's bad. bad. Jeez. So I'm torn between two teams, um, both young, both with uh, aspirations to be in the play in zone, um, both with lots of questions about uh, their, guards about who exactly is going to get stops etc etc i suppose i will take the houston rockets here um thinking being just that you know maybe there's a world where jalen green puts it together for a full season where uh the hype that they got from last year's cupcake schedule towards the end carries over uh yeah we'll take we'll take the spurs and the rockets with the picks hmm so Charlotte, Chicago, Detroit, Washington, Brooklyn, uh, Clippers, Utah, Portland. That's what's left. Uh, so we're really intellectualizing some real duty uh, here. Uh, who's more pathetically trying to win, Chicago or LA? I'm going to go for the Clippers. No, they have no. I'm going to. I'm going for Chicago. Damn it! Let's go. Go ball. Go ball. Chicago it is. Okay. Let's uh, go. Justin, you're up. <laughs> well, I think here it comes down to do we believe in Kawhi? I don't. Uh, or do we believe in Charles Lee? I do. So I think I'll go with the Charlotte Hornets. Beautiful. And for your next pick, you're going to take the Clippers? Because now you open the ninth round. I mean, yeah, okay. They were well, a playoff team. Who else is there? I'll tell you who's there. The Detroit Pistons. They're sick of losing. Oof. They kind of look oh, good in the spring man, there. Jeremy. Shout out to Detroit's <laughs> own Ty Carlin. I'll take oh, the, oh, man. What? What was it? You take the Wizards? I mean, I don't know. It's, All right, show us how it's done. You got two more picks. I do have two more picks. Um, this is it, huh? Okay. Um, so I will take the team of this remaining squads uh, with the best coach and with the best player in Larry Markinen. Utah Jazz, why not? You know, I mean, maybe Markin and Pops, maybe uh, some of their young guys get a little better. Will Hardy's good at grinding wins out of bad teams. So we'll take the Jazz. And, oh, boy, things are quite grim. Who do we have left here? Washington, Brooklyn, and Portland. Oh, man. It's a preview of the lottery, if I had to guess. That is going to be really tough. Uh, I guess I will take the Wizards. Um, I think Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma and Jonas Valanciunas and Malcolm Brogdon will all be looking to pump up their trade value a little bit uh, before the deadline. So they'll they'll sneak out some stupid wins uh, between the beginning of the season and February. I have no hope for the remaining teams. So... Uh, I'll take Brooklyn. Brooklyn has some real players. I think they're they're going to have to trade a few of them away for them to really tank the way they want to. Um, net neutral. It's not, it's a bad team with 
some solid players and that's a good way to win on a back-to-back in January. So they might have a closer to 500 record until the front office tears that thing down to the studs. So I'll happily take the nets, which means Justin, you take the Portland, Portland Donovan Klingons. I mean, yeah. 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 Uh, so good for you. So uh, I'll recap our teams. We'll post it online. So you don't have to write all this down listener. Uh, but check back in if you're so inclined throughout the season and certainly in the spring when we add these up. We're still looking for a prize. Um, but, Justin, these are your 10 teams. Hopefully their uh, collective wins wins you that undisclosed prize. You have Boston, Philly, Milwaukee, Cleveland, Sacramento, New Orleans, Golden State, Chicago, the Los Angeles Clippers, and Portland. Cameron, what a I either did a really good job or a really bad job. We'll see. I got New New York, Indiana, Memphis, Minnesota, Phoenix, Toronto, the Lakers, Chicago, Detroit, and Brooklyn. And Alex, you got OKC, Denver, Orlando, Dallas, Atlanta, Miami, San Antonio, Houston, Utah, and Washington. So whoever has the team with the most wins wins the wins tournament. Uh, this episode of the Boston Celtics Live podcast. My team is so bad, guys. Yeah, your team is bad. You were talking big time before uh, before we recorded this, and uh, I, I think you have clearly the worst buddy. I'm sorry to say it. <laughs> so he's going to win, well, of course, because yeah, that's how right. the NBA is. Of Which, yeah, of course, I, I, I am going to win. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this episode of the Celtics Live podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclusive fantasy basketball partner of the CLNS Media Network. Celtics Lab is also brought to you by Game Time Tickets, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Check out Justin's work over on Celtics Wire and all the other Wire sites, including his story from Cancun on Raising Canes and the sports chicken empire they're building. Um, it's it's really good. Justin uh, does a lot of um, quick writing. This is thoughtful writing. It's good to read Justin's thoughtful writing. I don't get to do that very often. It was definitely nice to step out of the uh building the typical articles you don't read for more than 30 seconds and uh, that's they're just designed that way anyways uh alex plays in a band called divine sweater they're on tour go find them at the house of blues opening for the honey badger california honey drops so close wednesday night at the house of blues in boston and then also down in hingham over the weekend sunday yeah that's the weekend uh, so check out Divine Sweater, check them out live or wherever you get your music. And please like and subscribe to our podcast to never miss an episode so that in April you can see who won our little uh, wins pool. And until then, we got two preseason games coming at you this weekend. I'll be there, I'm pretty sure, and we'll be there next week to wrap it all up and some other stuff because that's usually what we do. And until then, thanks for listening. Arrivederci.